Let's talk about the sanctity of life. Welcome to The Whole Truth, everyone, where I am taking you through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation without skipping anything. So if that sounds good to you, reach down, hit the little subscribe button below, and then that way every time I put out another video, you'll get a notification of that. Now, today we're talking about Leviticus chapter 20 in the first few verses, which talk about the god Molech. And I'm obviously going to make a modern day equivalent of Molech out of abortion. And you'll see why as I go through this video, I'll try to explain why. You've probably heard some other people maybe even mention this. I've, I feel like I've heard a few commentators, news commentators, Christian news commentators, uh, and podcasts that have referenced abortion to Molech. And so if you've been questioning that, at the very least, I can help to answer some of why that equivalent is there. And I'll show you, my, my plan today is to show you what God had to say in his word and why he was saying it, why that was so important. And hopefully you'll see why I see such an equivalent from Molech to today's abortion. So stick with me. It's Leviticus chapter 20. And let's look at verse one. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Again, you shall say to the children of Israel, whoever of the children of Israel or of the strangers who dwell in Israel, who gives any of his descendants to Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from his people because he has given some of his descendants to Molech to defile my sanctuary and profane my holy name. And if the people of the land should in any way hide their eyes from the man when he gives some of his descendants to Molech and they do not kill him, then I will set my face against that man and against his family and I will cut him off from his people and all who prostitute themselves with him to commit harlotry with Molech. So God obviously has a problem with this false god, Molech, because he names him out specifically and says anybody who gives their children to this god, Molech, those people, not only should they be cut off, but the Bible says that they should be stoned with stones. Now, I've already told you that we're dealing, I'm making a modern day equivalent out of that. So let's just go ahead and deal with the stoning part. Am I saying that anybody should go out and get stones and stone anybody else? No, this was God's ordinance for his nation. This is Moses on Mount Sinai receiving the laws from God for Israel to follow and govern the nation. So this is God. I'm not saying for anyone to go out and get stones and stone anybody else. Do not misinterpret what I'm saying in this video because I'm saying clearly that is not what we are supposed to do. However, God does show that he took this very, very seriously. Here is how serious he took it. If anybody gets caught doing it, whether they're a stranger or if they're an Israelite, in other words, if they're a foreigner living in the land or an Israelite, if anybody in Israel, they give their child to the God Molech, then those people needed to be stoned in ancient Israel. That's how serious God took this. Why did God take it that seriously? Well, let's talk about what Molech was. He was a big fat God who had his hands out and in his big fat belly, it was a a fire pit. They would build a fire inside of the idol, the physical idol of the god Molech. They would put a fire inside of its belly and they would light it. And on his hands were basically like the shape of a pan. And when they would get red hot, then people would take their babies and they would put their babies on the red hot hands of Molech. Now, most scholars, commentators, and historians will say that they would burn that baby to death that they would literally fry that baby to death on the hands of Molech. Some have said, some scholars have come out recently and tried to say that they would put the baby on there and and basically brand the baby, scar the baby. They would leave the baby on there long enough that um, that it would maim him. The longer, the, the better. And then they would pull the baby back off. Now, that's only I've only heard that from some modern-day scholars. I haven't heard that... Anybody older seems to have the same opinion that Molech was a god where you would sacrifice your child. 
And I, I first of all, I want to address something. The ancient world was not dumb. I think that there's this kind of like, oh, we're in a, you know, we're an advanced society. We're we're in 2022, and so you know, we we would know better than such a thing. You know, they they didn't know better. They were they were doing it because they thought they were worshiping that god. The mom who did that that was not that did not come easy for her the the dad that took his baby and was going to sacrifice it to molech did not sacrifice his baby to molech because he he just didn't care he it just wasn't a big deal to him no it was a huge deal you see in the ancient world they saw gods as something very special they understood that there is a spirit world, there is something beyond us. And so in worship of the god Molech, it was to show such devotion to him. You were so devoted to this god that you would give up a baby, you would give up a child, and you would sacrifice a child. That was through tears. You don't think the day leading up to it, you don't think that the day that that mom is nursing her baby and on the way to that, you don't think that that's hard for her? Of course it was. She, she wasn't idle. She wasn't naive. She wasn't dumb. She was a mother. She was a real person, just like you and I today. And that, was a, that one must have been a very hard decision to say that they worshiped Molech. They were so devoted to Molech that they were willing to sacrifice their child to Molech. Now, I'm going to tell you that that's a modern day equivalent to what we see in abortion. We're not dumb. We're not naive. We have 3D ultrasounds. It's pretty obvious to see that abortion is not happening to a clump of cells. It's pretty evident to see that there is life. There is a heartbeat. And and we all talk about heartbeat and the heartbeat bill and, and all of those things. But friends, it goes so much further than that. I mean, there is a living life inside of a human being. And someone would say, yeah, but that child's not been born yet. And I have two arguments to that. Number one, I've personally seen my wife had, when we were having children, my wife had 3D ultrasounds. And here she was with this tiny little bulge on her belly. And they would do a 3D ultrasound. And there there was our sons. There was, there was our children. You could you could make out their faces. You could see you could see the the shape of their chin and their nose and their hands as they would move inside of her. Now, there's no question that that's a life. This is more than yes, the heartbeat is there, and that's and we used to use that in the ultrasound to to hear the the heartbeat. We would hear that first, but friends, it goes so much further than that. There's no ignorance here now. And I would say even further, let me take the equivalent even further. I don't think that the women today who go for an abortion, I don't think that that's an easy choice for most of those women. I think that that's a very hard choice. I think that that is a very hard thing to do. And I'm sure that the days leading up to it are traumatic. And I'm sure that they are difficult for those women. And in that way, my heart is broken. But my heart is also broken to see us allowing such sin inside of our nation. And here's the third equivalent I want to give you. We're so devoted to it. I mean, that's really the factor here, is that we're so devoted to it. And you say, Justin, we're not devoted to a a God. Well, we kind of are. We do have a modern day God. It's not Molech. It's the mirror. You see, what we've done, and this is all through society, but we see it inside of abortion as well. What we've done is we've set ourselves up as God. If it feels good, that's what we want to do. If it's what we want, then that's what that's what we're going to do. And we don't think anybody should be able to stop us or tell us no, don't tell us we can't do that, or don't ruin something further in my life. I hear a a lot of women who had abortions, the choice was made for an abortion because they were concerned about the rest of their life. They were concerned about what else was happening in their life and what was going to get changed and and even ruined if there was a baby inside of that. And so I'm, I'm trying to explain this to you that we've set ourselves up as God. 
if, if it's going to somehow impede on what we want or what we desire or what we like or what we want for our future, then we think we have a right to go against what God has said. And what God is proving right here is that he takes life very seriously. And he told Israel, don't have any part of these people who would sacrifice their children to this God, this God Molech. Don't have any part of that. Get them completely out. God told his people, stone them, get them out. And then he said something else. He said, if you won't stone them, if you won't get rid of them, if you know that they're doing this and you won't drive that out, then he says, I'll turn my face against that person, the person who knew about it and didn't do anything about it. I'll turn my face against him. That's what he said in the text. Christians, we should stand against abortion. We need to take a stand and say, no, we're not accepting this in our country. You cannot, you cannot give me an excuse to make me agree to aborting a baby. I won't do it. I won't agree because you don't do something right by doing something wrong. And when I know for a fact, I, as I've already explained, I've seen the ultrasounds for myself. You can't take away the firsthand experience that I've had. There is a life inside of the woman who is pregnant. And even if you want to try to give me the excuses of it's, if you think that it's not a life, if you want to call it a fetus instead of a baby, and you want to try to give me those excuses, you're going to run into a second problem. What are you going to do with all the partial birth abortions that are happening? And now even the post birth abortions. So what are we going to do with those? What are we going to do with partial birth? What are we going to do with post birth abortions? Friends, it's not going to end with three weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks. It's not going to end there. It, it never does. Abortion should be ended completely. It should be totally eradicated. We don't need to have that in our nation at all. As a matter of fact, I would go as far as to say, I believe the Lord would bless our nation if we would put that away and if we would get rid of that. And every believer Every church should be taking a stand and saying no to abortion. None at all. Don't sacrifice that baby to Molech because you're devoted to that. Well, friends, let me say this. Don't sacrifice your baby to what you think your future is. Don't sacrifice your baby because you think it's going to harm something in your life. As a matter of fact, I could give you testimony after testimony of people who thought that the baby was going to ruin their life, and really what they found was that the baby was such a blessing to their life. There are other solutions besides abortion, and those should be sought, not taking an innocent life, even if that life is pre-born, even if that life is hidden by skin, even if that life is hidden being held together inside of a woman. So yes, am I saying that if you don't want the baby, if you don't want to be pregnant, you don't want your body to go through that, you don't want to have to try to eat healthy, I'm saying that you ought to sacrifice that. You ought to sacrifice your own wants, your own desires to bring that life into the world and that that life should be precious. If you need to put that life up for adoption, if you need to put that baby up for adoption, maybe that's another solution. But taking that life because you've set your own self up, because you're so concerned about your own life and what that's going to look like in your own life if you have that baby, friends, sacrificing that baby is not the answer. And I know, I know right now there's, I'm probably going to get some hate if I don't even get kicked off. I'm probably going to get some hate over this one. God hates it. He hates abortion. It's not the answer that it's more important to listen to what God says. It's more important to be concerned about that baby's life than it is to be concerned about what goes on in your life currently, right now, what's going to happen to your body or any other excuses that you give me. None of those are going to be acceptable. Abortion is wrong. God doesn't want any, he doesn't want us to have any part of abortion in our nations or in our churches. Those things need to be put away. If you're hearing this and you're feeling guilt, you're feeling shame, probably even anger, I want to remind you that God said in his word that he will forgive us if we'll confess to him. If you have 
been in the middle of that. If you've had an abortion, if you've encouraged an abortion and you read this and you go, oh my, what's going to happen to me? Friends, you're in the same place that every other person who's ever committed a sin, you're in the same place that we've been. I've, I'm a sinner and I've sinned in my own way. I've sinned in, I've obviously never had an abortion. I've never encouraged an abortion, but I've sinned in other ways. And the wages of sin is death. That's what sin brings. So when you read about this one about sacrificing to Molech and how God said to stone him, listen, God's not saying that he's, gonna, that he's done with you and he's gonna put you in, he'll never forgive you. No, what he says is this. If we will confess, he is faithful to forgive us of all unrighteousness. He doesn't want us to sin. He's not encouraging us to sin. He's told us that if we do sin, that we have an advocate with him, with, with the Father, and that is Jesus Christ, who died for you and rose for you. That was what the death of Christ paid for, was your sin. And then Jesus rose from the grave, and he who is alive today offers to give you new life if you'll put your trust in him. So if you're feeling shame or guilt from any sin, but specifically to this video today, if you're feeling shame or guilt because of abortion, because of any form of it, I want you to know that there's forgiveness in Christ Jesus. If you'll ask him to forgive you, he forgives you and goes even further than that. He'll give you eternal life. And one day, you and that baby can be reunited. I even know women right now who've had abortions in their past. They regret it, deeply regret it, but they look forward to the day with hope and longing that they will get to see their baby in glory because that baby was taken in innocence and that's where it is even today. And the Lord has offered you eternal life if you'll put your trust in Him. And I hope that you'll do that. I hope that you'll come back tomorrow and as we, as we get a little further into Leviticus chapter 20. All right, I'll see you then.